Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will discuss one very complex dental biomaterial and that is dentine bonding agents. The reason why I wanted to make a video on this topic is because of the tremendous advancements that have happened in the field of adhesive dentistry. And I believe the future belongs to bonded restorations, whether it is direct or indirect. And to have predictable results, it is important for us to go back to the basics and have adequate knowledge about enamel and dentine bonding. So this topic will be divided in two parts. The first part, that is in this video, I'll talk about the fundamentals of enamel and dentine bonding. And the second part will concentrate on the different types or the different generations of bonding agents we have and the evidence-based practices currently used. So let's begin. I don't want to overcomplicate things, so I'll try to keep things as simple as possible. We'll first start by understanding the structure of enamel. So enamel is a dry substrate without any vital structures. It contains almost 95% of inorganic matter, which is hydroxyapatite and a small amount of organic matter and water. Because of this particular composition, enamel is considered to be the most ideal substrate for bonding and it forms a tight adhesive joint. More the enamel, better is the bond. So when we want to bond our restorative material on the enamel, how do we go about it? And what's the whole process? It's very simple, something we do on a daily basis, and that is acid etching. For this, we need to give the credit to Michael Bunokor, who in 1955 developed a technique to improve bonding on enamel. This was based on an industrial technique that improved the adhesion of paints on the metal surfaces. So what was that technique? He discovered that 85% phosphoric acid changes the enamel surface and makes it more suitable for mechanical adhesion. And even today, the technique of etching the enamel surface is considered to be the gold standard for bonding resin-based materials to the tooth structure. So bonding to the enamel consists of two clinical steps. One is acid etching and we use 37% phosphoric acid for 15 to 30 seconds. And that is followed by the application of adhesive resin or bonding agent to the etched surface. Let us now discuss why it is necessary for us to etch the enamel surface. So basically, after preparation of the tooth surface, there is some debris which is formed, which compromises the bonding or adhesion on the surface. So etching cleans the enamel surface from the debris. Second point is that acid etching increases the enamel surface area and surface energy, which in turn improves bonding. One very important use of etching is to partially dissolve the hydroxyapatite crystals to create retentive microporosities into which the bonding agent can infiltrate and form retentive resin tags. This is where the whole concept of micromechanical retention comes from. So the acid etch technique has revolutionized the practice of restorative dentistry. But is it the same for dentine? Let's find out. So dentine is basically a more complex structure and because of this dentine bonding has been one of the most challenging and less predictable tasks in adhesive dentistry. And what are these issues that we come across? To understand this, we will take a look into the histology of dentine in brief. First and foremost, if we talk about the composition of dentine, in contrast to enamel, dentine has a lot more organic component and also water, which makes it a humid structure overall. One very important feature which makes dentine different from enamel is the presence of dentinal tubules. These tubules are lined by a hypermineralized peritubular dentine, which is primarily made of hydroxyapatite crystals. Then we have the less mineralized intertubular dentine containing the collagen fibrils. This is the dentine traversing in between the tubules. Also, there is fluid present within the intertubular dentine. This makes the dentine an intrinsically moist tissue very much unlike the dry enamel substrate. Moreover, this fluid present in the dentinal tubules constantly flows outwards which can again interfere with adhesion. One point I want to mention is that the density of dentinal tubules varies with dentine depth as well as the water content. It is the lowest in superficial dentine and highest in deep dentine. So basically, more the amount of tubules present, better is the dentine surface and lower is the adhesive bond strength. Therefore, as we go deeper into the dentine, the bond strength decreases. Dentine also contains vital processes of the pulp, that is the odontoblast, which makes it a sensitive structure. Lastly, one of the most important factors which need to be considered in dentine bonding is the presence of smear layer. So elaborating on the topic of smear layer a little bit. So first of all, what is smear layer? So basically, when we prepare the tooth, the tooth surface is covered with a layer of cutting debris and that is called as a smear layer. This smear layer consists of residual organic and inorganic components, mainly crushed hydroxyapatite crystals, 
as well as fragmented and denatured collagen. This cutting debris also obstructs the orifices of dentinal tubules extending up to a depth of 1 to 10 microns and that is known as smear plugs. In clinical conditions, presence of smear layer is considered as a physical barrier and that reduces dentine permeability by 86% directly affecting the bonding. Therefore, to improve the permeability on the dentine, first we have to deal with the smear layer and there are basically two options to do that. One is removal of smear layer before bonding following an etch and rinse procedure and second is use of bonding agents which can penetrate through the smear layer. So let us discuss the first technique that is removal of the smear layer. The smear layer can be essentially removed with acid etching or use of phosphoric acid and subsequently washed away during the rinsing step. The phosphoric acid in the etchant dissolves the mineralized part of the dentine that is hydroxyapatite to a certain depth and leaves the dentinal collagen network suspended in water. The water Water prevents the collagen fibers from collapsing. One more point to note here is that after rinsing of the etchant, we dry the tooth surface. But if we over dry the etched dentine surface, it leads to collapse of the collagen fibers. This restricts the diffusion of present in the bonding agent into the dentine. In the same way, over wet conditions also result in lower bond strengths due to dilution of the adhesive. Therefore, now it is recommended to brush out the excess water with a cotton pellet, a disposable brush or a tissue paper. Recent studies have suggested that dentine moisture may not be so important if the adhesive is vigorously rubbed onto the dentine surface. In fact, to improve the diffusion of bonding agent into moist dentine, one of the components of adhesive is a hydrophilic primer which can infiltrate the collagen network. The primer being hydrophilic can establish a bond with the moist dentine. Once a bonding agent or the adhesive resin infiltrates into the dentine, it forms a layer known as a hybrid layer, which is neither resin nor the tooth, but a hybrid of the two. The hybridized dentine reduces the risk of microleakage, incidence of secondary caries and also post-operative sensitivity. The other way to deal with the smear layer is smear layer modification in which cell fetching systems are used. In this case, the smear layer is not dissolved or removed. Instead, it is incorporated in the adhesive resin to form the hybrid layer. So these are the two ways to deal with the smear layer. Finally, though enamel and dentine are completely different substrates, when it comes to adhesion on enamel and dentine, it is micromechanical interlocking that is a basic mechanism. And with this we come to an end. This video covered only the basic mechanism of enamel and dentine bonding. In the part 2 of the topic, you will see the different types of dentine bonding agents that are available to us and the evidence-based protocol that we need to follow. If you feel that this video has benefited you in any way, please don't forget to hit the like, share and subscribe button.